Before we start, we acknowledge and pay our respect to the traditional custodians of the lands and waters of the New South Wales and all Aboriginal elders, past, present, and emerging. The Institute of Construction Materials is a community of experts in the field. We are sharing our experience and knowledge throughout this platform to a broader international community. The Quarterly Journal of Construction Materials, online courses, and the recently developed ICM coin as our crypto asset are only some of the ways that are helping us in achieving our goal. That's why we believe gatherings like this uh, form the future of construction industry. My name is Farid, your moderator for this year's webinar. I'm involved in multiple research projects here at the Institute since a few years ago. This year's webinar is mostly focused on topics related to economics, construction safety, and structural analysis. The agenda for today, um, after this opening, we have a bit of a change in the agenda as Isaac um, apparently couldn't attend. Um, we'll start with uh, the presentation by Anush Trahili on measuring them uh, to minimize, on measures to minimize incidents on construction sites in Australia. Then following by a five minute Q&A uh, where you can ask your questions. You can actually uh, drop your messages as well um, in the chat box if you have any questions. Um, then after that, Hello Eunice starts um, by presenting refined find finite element model for predicting strength and serviceability behavior for timber composite beams. That's TCB. Uh, then again, following by um, a Q&A session and a closing of the webinar. Each uh, speaker present their research research outcome in a 15 minutes time span, followed by a five minutes uh, Q&A, as explained, for you to ask your questions. Please um, keep your microphones mute during the presentations. And at the end, I would like to invite you to create your account with us if you don't have one already, using the link provided in the chat box. I'll send that uh, later after this opening. Um, this way you can earn your very first ICM coins, that's 10 ICM coins, we will deposit it in your account right after your first login. This crypto asset that is built on top of the Ethereum blockchain helps you a lot in funding your research, even internationally without paying uh, for the exchange fees. It's currently valued as $2 each and we expect it to become available for public trading in the next future. Anush, um, it's all over to you. I'm making the host so that you can share your screen for presentation. Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Anush Chahelu Subi. I'm in my final year of my Bachelor of Construction Management at Western Sydney University. And I'll be talking about measures to minimize incidents on construction sites in Australia. So a bit of introduction, why the Australian construction industry and why safety? Well, the Australian construction industry is a large contributor to the global domestic product and is rapidly growing. Now, why safety in particular for this presentation? Well, the safety is one of the biggest um, items that we need to look at for the construction sites due to being one of the highest fatality rates in Australia, um, many unsafe behaviors occurring. Um, incidents are always gonna be inviolable as workers can make mistakes um, and short work schedules often result in more unsafe behaviors. So this presentation is gonna look at measures that we can implement on our sites to reduce those fatalities or incidents occurring. So the current safety, um, serious incidents have dropped approximately 31% from 2001, 2002 period to 2011 to 2012 period. Um, so in future, this looks like it's gonna continuously uh, decline and 
in the future, more practices will be used to minimize these incidents. The current measures that we implement are the Australian Work Health and Safety Strategy 2012 to 2022, 3D and 4D technology, safe work method statements, safety culture, using personal protective equipment or PPE, and tool improvements or material improvements. So a bit about safety culture and safety climate. Safety culture is defined as a group and individual values, attitudes, perceptions, competencies, and patterns of behaviors that determine the style and proficiency in work. Safety climate ties directly into safety culture as it is defined as the shared perceptions of safety policies and procedures. So the vagueness of the term safety culture is probably one of the biggest issues regarding um, this item. For example, what's safe in our environment couldn't be safe in another person's environment. So that vagueness sort of needs to be clarified in terms of the Australian safety market, uh, Australian uh, work health and safety. So a bit about safe work method statements. They're one of the main documents used to guide safe work practices on work sites. Um, so they pretty much use a risk matrix to assess the outcomes of any operations or works that they undertake on sites. As you can see on the image um, down here, it basically shows a high risk level and how to minimize that or how to reduce the risk of that happening. However, safe work method statements are not a legal requirement to enter sites yet. <clears throat> Personal protective equipment, PPE as it stands, is, you know, your hard hats, eye shields, gloves, steel cap boots, masks and ear protection. Significantly prevents and reduces injury. Uh, the correct use of PPE um, ensures that there's less injuries for the personnel uh, and is trying to be further enforced on construction sites. PPE is a way to protect yourselves from any incidents actively hurting you. There's also the technology advancements in PPE, which can include uh, the steel cap boots originally being made with a steel toe cap to being made now with a fiberglass or a plastic um, toe cap. So when they actually, um, the boots, you know, get under pressure, instead of actually um, cutting your toes off, the actual plastic will bend or crack. So you'll get less risk or less harm to your feet. Technology and design advancements. So this is probably one of the newest players in how we minimize incidents. Uh, 3D and 4D technology. So with 4D technology, it'll pretty much give us a real-time look at how we're going to complete this project, where the highest risk tasks are, and how we're going to actually complete um, how we're going to complete these tasks. How we're going to, you know, for example, install the crane on one side and how we're going to move about it, how we're going to, you know, work safely around that. And being in real time, you'll be able to, you know, identify where the main hazards will be, et cetera. Now, the issue with this at the current stage is it's being implemented slowly into construction industry. And if it was implemented too fast, a lot of resources will be depleted, trying to, you know, quickly turn over to this. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the materials involvement or materials improving to minimize incidents. As building materials evolve, safer materials are being used in our industry. For example, you have the processing of stone and the exposure of dust, which is still continuously happening at the current stage. However, you know, with our PPE now, we're trying to minimize that exposure. Um, with all hazardous materials, any materials that we use, we use MSDS or material safety data sheets. One of the 
uh, key materials that we have moved around from or evolved from was the use of asbestos. It was one of the highly hazardous materials and just give me one second. In the 1980s, it was slowly phased out. And in 2003, there was a complete banning on the use of that hazardous material due to the side effects from future use. Another key strategy or way that we minimize um, incidents is Australian Work Health and Safety Strategy 2012 to uh, 2022. It's a nationwide uh, scale which involves all construction personnel. There's three targets, which includes reducing worker fatalities by 20%, reducing incident rates of claims by 30%, and reduction in claims resulting in time off work due to musculoskeletal disorders, et cetera. Uh, there, is, there are seven, um, what was it? Seven key areas that they're trying to, uh, seven action areas, sorry, which include supply chains and networks, health and safety by design, health and safety capabilities, research and evaluation, leadership and culture, government, and responsive and effective regulatory framework. Um, so far as of 2018, they had a review of the strategy in place and seeing if these targets are being met, which most of them were. Uh, the current this uh, strategy is currently being reviewed for the future 10 year period. Uh, we're not sure exactly when they'll start, but it'll probably be uh, 2022 to 2032 uh, or period, et cetera. The old period was from 2002 to 2012. So some of the findings that I found were um, all the studies that have been given on measures to minimize uh, incidents of construction industries could be um, combined together to find out what, um, what's the best measure to take place or how these measures can be used together in the industry. Another key finding or um, item that we found out was that the measures identified did not actually test for the results of what the safe work practice would include or what that measure would do, um, what are the results from that measure being implemented. Uh, there was not much of a comparison to saying which one worked the best, um, which item is perhaps the best one to use or is it a combination or what's the level at the moment. Uh, Currently, there's a careless attitude to implement the measures due to safety culture in New South Wales and Australia. And there is also a large gap in what is the best, best measure to implement and how to reduce the risk in the most efficient way. Um, so uh, I'm at the end now, just a concluding final slide. So most of these items have already been implemented in the construction industry, safety culture, safety climate. You know, our toolbox talks are becoming more and more regular. Um, you have your swims, which are always being used uh, for main, main sites, et cetera. You have your PPA, which must be worn or used in most sites nowadays. Uh, technology and design advancements are still a far way off. Um, I'm not sure if that will be in the next strategy or when that will sort of become more evolved or more of a method that we're using to minimize our risk. The materials have always been continuously improving, you know, our tools, our machinery, the way we do our work. Um, some of the, you know, new machinery that they're coming out now to protect the person even wearing PPE like vibration uh, mitigation, et cetera. And the Australian strategy is another method that they're continuously trying to update, make it more relevant to where we are. Um, the most popular you know, method that they're using are the swim, safety, culture, and the correct use of PPA. Uh, technology advancements are still a wide way, while away from being used. Um, 
And the hardest part or the recommendation is how do we actually test these results on construction site? How do we test if swims are the best method to use on construction sites to minimize incidents? What's the impact of using a swims on a site? What's the impact of using a PPE? And how do we actually go about testing that? Now, the record, uh, the knowledge used in this presentation and um, the research work can be used by all um, work health and safety uh, personnel, anyone in the construction industry that are looking to uh, further improve their uh, safety on sites. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you so much, Anush. Um... Anyone have questions? I'm going to ask my question at the end. Thank you, Anush. Um, no questions. Sorry. No questions for me. All right. Um, so I have two questions, actually, Anush. Yep. Um, you've mentioned the use of 3D and 4D technology um, yep. as part of the training process for bringing more safety in construction sites. Yep. Um, I was just wondering if that 4D technology is similar to the VR video type of things, those um, headsets we wear for the VR, is that the same thing or is it a type um, of another technology? Yeah, so the 4D, um, that's part of it, the virtual reality sort of work. The other um, item which I focused mainly was the use of using a CAD software where you could actually design uh, a project and use a project schedule. So you could actually watch a mini video of that project coming to life with the schedule. Okay, because we are actually collaborating with the uh, Russian Technology Institute. They're mm -hmm. really focused on um, education and VR together. They're training um, high school students yeah. um, with their VR headsets. And that was like, kind of relevant to your presentation but it can be um, a really effective way because like you said once people can get a better understanding of um, the whole work process on site that can reduces the health risks a lot so the other question i had was re uh, related to the regulations and um, the australian standards regarding reducing um the um health risk um yeah. is it something like a monitoring process or the putting more safety personnel on site and um the other question was that how is it going to financially make sense for the um for the like the main contractor i mean i think at the current stage, safety is a big um, item that they're looking at at sites. Most larger sites nowadays have a safety officer on site, which are implementing all these items uh, for their personnel to reduce the, you know, the incidents that occur. Um, in future, I'm not sure how big the safety team will become on the site or will they become more office-based, et cetera. Um, safety is sort of one of those industries where currently there is a high demand for those personnel to work on site, um, you know, showcasing what are those safe practices, you know, your safe talks, your inductions, etc. cetera. Um, and how do we move away from, you know, the sites without an induction on them or how do we involve the, more technology into that um, induction stage with the safety officer. For example, could we use an electronic form where they could, you know, do that induction part instead of having a safety officer on site? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll just Any go. questions from Yuan, Yuan Chen? Apparently not. Um, okay, so um, hello. Yep. Yes. Um, to make you host. Thank you.
Uh, Anush should be making you host now because he's the host now. Are you sure you have to share now? Ah, yes, I can share my screen. Yeah. All right. So thank you very much for uh, having me in this uh, webinar to present my uh, topic. Uh, my name is Hala. I am a PhD candidate at Latrobe University conducting a research on uh, strengthening um, timber structural elements. So the, the topic of my presentation uh, today is a refined finite element model for predicting strength and serviceability behavior for timber composite uh, beam, which is a TC beam. So the agenda of my presentation uh, will start with introduction to um, my presentation to the topic and then uh, study aim, methodology, conclusion, and references. So I'll give you a bit of introduction about sustainable uh, buildings and um, timber buildings. So as we all know that sustainability has recently became the priority focus in many businesses and industries especially in the building and construction industry. So the current sustainability design uh, frameworks and the innovation of engineered wood products, um, asset engineers uh, and architects and planners to move into a new direction and creating biophilic eco-friendly buildings and cities using sustainable materials like timber. So as we all know, timber is a sustainable material as it uh, proves the principle of sustainability. It is environmentally friendly. It, is, uh, it has positive uh, impact on social and community, and also it is cost effective. So in terms of environmentally friendly, it has a low uh, impact on the environment. Uh, it is renewable resource. It has less uh, greenhouse gas emission. It, um, uh, it can observe the CO2. Uh, from the atmosphere. In terms of having positive impact on social and community, so it provides healthy environment and for labor and workers, um, dealing with timber is very easy. It is easy to handle, easily transported, easily, uh, easy to, uh, to build and construct, and also uh, it requires less heavy uh, machines uh, in the site. In terms of the cost effective, cost effective, uh, uh, mostly it is locally available and uh, fast delivery um, uh, required less people or less uh, workforce on the site. So all these uh, elements make uh, dealing with timber or using timber in the, uh, in the building um, cost effective. So in order to extend the use of timber structural member and produce a long, uh, beams, structural beams uh, with high uh, strength and uh, good serviceability and reduce the use of traditional um, building materials like steel and concrete, it's found that it is important to strengthen and enhance the, uh, the strength properties uh, and the serviceability of behavior of uh, timber structural elements. So therefore, after investigation, it's found that there are two methods in general to strengthen uh, the timber beams or the timber uh, structural element. Uh, the first method is uh, internal strengthening method and the other method is external uh, strengthening method. The general um, strengthening materials used, uh, whether for the internal or the external are either uh, metallic materials or um, hardwood compress uh, uh, devil or fiber reinforcement polymer composite uh, materials. So those are in general the timber strengthening uh, materials. 
Now, in order to find uh, what is the best type of uh, timber uh, that is locally available and work on improving its uh, mechanical properties or its strength uh, properties, I have reviewed a number of uh, uh, tests in order to decide on what type of engineered wood product uh, that I will work on in, in order to improve its, um, its uh, strength uh, properties. So I have reviewed 10 strengthening methods um, in order to see the, uh, the improvement percentage and decide the type of uh, timber. So five, uh, as you can see in the figure, uh, five external strengthening methods and uh, five uh, tests uh, used internal strengthening uh, methods. And after measuring the, the improvement percentage of each uh, test, it's found that the best um, the best test to um, or the best uh, type of timber that uh, is good to work on is the uh, glue lamp. Uh, however, uh, glue lamp is uh, not locally available in Australia, and my aim is to produce a sustainable building. So I'm trying to find and work on um, a, a type of engineer wood product that is locally. Uh, available. So after deep investigation, I'm contacting many uh, companies. It's uh, found that uh, LVL also, um, it's uh, sorry, it's uh, locally available and it is good. It's mostly uh, used in uh, many uh, buildings. And according to the reviewed uh, strengthening uh, uh, test, uh, it's found that the improvement percentage using carbon fiber reinforcement polymer sheet to uh, this type of uh, timber. Uh, uh, improves the properties or the strength of properties by 30%. Uh, so in my research, I have decided to work on uh, this type of timber, the LVL uh, uh, timber structural uh, member. Now, um, so the study, um, the aim of my study is uh, to find an optimum uh, economic solution to strength timber structural members uh, via conducting a computational study and developing a model uh, that is capable of uh, predicting the strength and serviceability behavior for timber composite uh, beam. And also by conducting this computational study, uh, we can reduce uh, conducting physical experiment uh, to just find the mechanical properties of particular uh, structural member or uh, structural problem. So by developing um, a computational model, this will help a lot to predict the properties, to, to predict the strength properties and the serviceability uh, behavior for uh, any structural member. So the methodology that I used in my um, study uh, is divided into four stages, as you can see in this figure. Stage one is reviewing the final element uh, software. And then stage two is developing a final element model. And then stage three is just analyze uh, analysis and result for the model. And then stage four is about result uh, validation uh, that's uh, generated from uh, the model. So starting with the stage number one, uh, the type of um, Finding element modeling software that I have reviewed is ANSYS and Abacus. And after investigating, after a deep investigation on uh, which one I will uh, select, I have decided to, to choose uh, Abacus uh, due to um, uh, many uh, reasons. Um, and then after uh, decide the, uh, the type of the software for uh, the modeling, uh, I, I moved to stage number two, which is uh, developing uh, the model. Um, in developing the model, uh, I have developed the 3D uh, final element uh, model using, uh, as I said, Abacus software, and the version was uh, using uh, the standard one, 2021. Now, um, in order to develop this, um, this model uh, and uh, estimate or measure the, uh, the strength the properties uh, of the structural member, um, there were uh, steps to uh, develop this model. 
those steps uh, were divided into two phases, two main phases. The, fa the first one is the, um, the preparation phase, uh, here where we need to define the structural member or the structural problem. Then in the second phase, second phase is also divided into three uh, steps. Uh, firstly, uh, pre-simulation process, and then simulation process, and then post-simulation uh, process. For the pre-simulation process, here where we need to create an input file, um, like um, the geometrical characteristic of the structural member, uh, the properties, the mechanical properties, this include the elastic properties of the member, and then uh, assemble the, um, um, the, the member, and then move to another uh, step, which is the simulation process here, where Abacus will analyze the model. And then um, after uh, this uh, step, it will be a post-simulation process where uh, we need to uh, extract the result and do uh, evaluation. So example of the first step, uh, as you can see here in this uh, figure. So the preparation includes like decide the type of the test. Uh, and in my model, I've decided to do a three point uh, Three point flexural test and um, specimen index is engineer wood products. So EWP uh, stands for uh, engineer's wood uh, product. And uh, detail that the name of the specimen is TCP, uh, timber composite uh, beam. And um, the, uh, the geometrical uh, characteristic of this member uh, length is uh, 2,400 by uh, 240 and the depth is 45. Spam length is uh, 2,100. This is the preparation after um, decide on uh, the geometrical properties and the type of the test. Now moving to uh, the software to phase number two, where we need to develop uh, the model. And, uh, and as you can see here in this, um, in this uh, image, so, Phase two will be um, uh, focused on all the model tree here on the uh, left side, starting with the part uh, material assemble here where we need to uh, input the, uh, the information that are required for uh, the model. In the part uh, here where we need to, um, uh, to, um, uh, to input the, the details of this, the, the structural member, in term of the uh, the length, width, and um, the depth, and to draw uh, or sketch uh, the shape. And for the material here, where we need to um, uh, input the material properties and assemble, because we have two parts here, two shapes, uh, one for uh, the timber and the other one for the strengthening uh, materials. And then um, uh, also. Uh, uh, decide on the constraints and uh, the boundary conditions, like we have here to simply support, and also the uh, the law. So all this information will be in the first uh, the first step, the pre simulation process. Then um, for the step and uh, uh, field output uh, request and history, this is going to be for the second one, the simulation process, and then submit the work in the job. Uh, for uh, the analysis and later on the evaluation. After completing uh, this, uh, the, the model and submitted for uh, the analysis, uh, then the result um, I've got, I've downloaded the load displacement here for, uh, the, for the model. And from, um, uh, from, the, from the load displacement care, we can estimate the fracture load. Uh, the ultimate uh, load carrying capacity, displacement, and other, other uh, strength properties like uh, ultimate bending moment capacity and uh, stiffness of the member. So here are uh, here is example of uh, the extracted result. Uh, we have fracture load, uh, ultimate carry, uh, load carrying capacity, and displacement. Now, after uh, completing stage three, the result, we need to evaluate or validate uh, the predicted result from the model 
moving to the next stage, which is stage uh, number four. In stage number four, um, result uh, validation, uh, the result of the predicted final element model has been uh, compared with uh, the result obtained from experiment uh, found in the literature. Uh, and as you can see here, the fracture load is, uh, for, uh, for the experiment is also 42.5. So the error percentage was zero. Uh, ultimate load carrying capacity was 30% uh, uh, and also for uh, the predicted uh, model was 30 and displacement found 16. So the error percentage um, was uh, zero. And this is, uh, indicated that uh, the predicted result uh, were in high agreement with uh, the result obtained from uh, the experiment uh, result found in the uh, literature. As a conclusion, uh, the proposed finite element model presented in this work show, uh, shows high efficiency and capability in predicting the strength and serviceability behavior for timber composite beam, and the predicted result were in high agreement with the experimental result data uh, adopted from the literature. And those are the references um, used in this presentation, and thank you. Thank you so much, Hala. Um, any questions? Yeah, I have a few questions, if that's okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, so uh, one of the questions was, how do we go about implementing more of these structural beams or more of these structural timbers in construction sites? Sorry, can you just say it again? How do we go about using more of these uh, structural uh, timber components in our um, construction sites? So if we have... For example, there's already LVL beam glue lamb available. How do we go about implementing them in, you know, for example, more houses or more buildings, et cetera? You can <laughs> decide in the design stage, the type yeah. of, the, uh, of the timber that you will use in, the, uh, in your project. So if you decided to use the LVL, then this should be identified in the design phase of the building. Um, and how is the... Uh, what was it, the fire uh, fire requirements of these structural beams? Are they, you know, uh, very safe to use in, you know, commercial environment, et cetera, or? Yes, this is a good question. Well, uh, it's for the engineered wood product, uh, they are treated and uh, the fire safety uh, measures have been uh, evaluated for it. Uh, for extra information, I just uh, would like to keep it for now for, for publication purpose. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. No worries. Right. Um, I had a couple of questions as well, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, one of the troubles that I have with timber is being actually environmental because um, there is an argument that we are cutting trees to build houses, and that um, is basically a non-environmental friendly act. Um, plus, it can affect. It can be affected by termite, and that is why the steel, uh, lighter steel frames are taking place instead of timber. Um, so I don't know how, if you can convince that this is actually an environmental friendly approach for construction. Uh, also, we are working on it uh, for the harvesting and uh, uh, cutting the trees. Uh, currently, according to the research, uh, shows that they are uh, the industry are following uh, a sustainable plan for harvesting and cutting uh, trees. So uh, uh, there is already uh, a plan for uh, for this. Uh, for however, uh, because I'm working on this and this is part of my research, so I just would like to keep the the further clarification That's uh, all right. for the per publication. Thank you so much. And um, so overall, another question I had was that uh, there were two methods um, in your research and um, one of them was internal strengthening and the other one was external uh, strengthening. And um, 
the one that was yeah, exactly. Um, so we've got a better results from internal strengthening. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, because this is for test number nine, engineered timber uh, product, which is Clulam. And the type of the reinforcement method is using uh, fiber reinforcement polymer uh, pins. So how does that work actually? We, like there are some pins out of a fiber material. Yes. And they are being nailed inside the Inside the beam, yes, to improve its uh, strength mm. uh, properties, yeah. So it's not like something of jacketing a timber beam. That would be uh, internal. No, this will, this is different. This is um, internal pins, long pins, according to the depth of the beam. So inserted inside uh, the structural member uh, to improve its uh, strength properties. Yeah. It is, uh, Glulam is one of the good uh, structural members. However, it's not uh, locally available in Australia. And it's, just, um, it's also expensive. And in my research, I, I'm focusing on producing a sustainable uh, solution uh, to improve the behavior of uh, the timber structural elements. So that's why I have reviewed a number of engineered wood products. And uh, one of these is also LVL. LVL is locally available and the price for LVL is um, acceptable. Uh, however, there are some limitation of using the LVL as the main structural uh, member in uh, some um, mid or high rise building. So I've decided to uh, investigate further on this uh, type of structural member and find um, an economic solution uh, to improve the strength and serviceability behavior for LBL. Thank you so much, Hala. My pleasure. Um, so yeah, it was all of the presentations today. Unfortunately, we couldn't catch up with Isaac um, for any reasons. As we have now concluded the final presentation from the 5th International Webinar on Construction Materials, I, on behalf of the organizing team, want to thank everyone who had joined this webinar. It was such an absolute privilege to have some of the brightest ones in the construction industry presenting their latest achievements. We hope that you take away a handful of resources for your next move in construction. The certificates of presentation and attendance will be sent within the next few days. If you have not registered through our website, please make sure to send us your email uh, should you wish to receive your certificate of attendance. Once again, thank you and hope to see you next year. Thank you. Thank you, Farad. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Anshush. Nice.